Okay, so first we're going to start with hand hygiene. Okay, so how are you today? My name is Adi and I'll be the nurse practitioner taking care of you today. Can you please tell me your name and date of birth? Yes, my name is Fadia Gorjaliu and it's March 26, 1988. Okay, perfect. Can you tell me where you are? I'm at the clinic. Okay, very good. Um, can you tell me the year that we're in? Year 2023. Okay, and can you tell me what you ate last night? Staff peppers. And can you spell the word cat? C-A-T. Okay, very good. So, patient is alert and oriented times three. The speech is uh, clear and coherent. Um, and recent and remote memory is intact. So now we're going to move on to vital signs. So I'm going to check your blood pressure first. Okay, very good. So patient's blood pressure was 115 over 70. Now we're going to check your pulse for 15 seconds. Um, and then I'll multiply it by four. Our heart rate was 65. Now we're going to check your respiratory rate. So just take normal deep, uh, normal breaths. Okay, perfect. So respirations are 18. Okay, so we're going to proceed with your head to toe physical examination. We're going to start off with your head and then we're going to end off with your deep tendon reflexes. Um, so let's go over the skin. The skin is normal and appropriate for ethnicity. Um, I don't see any obvious redness or rashes or lesions. I don't see any uh, visible masses. Um, I'm going to palpate your skin. The skin, I don't palpate any uh, lesions or masses. The skin is warm to touch. Uh, there is a normal skin turgor. No signs of dehydration. Now we're going to move on to the head. The head is atraumatic and normal cephalic. I don't see any um, scales or lesions uh, on the scalp. The hair is evenly distributed. It's thick. I'm going to palpate your head. Do you have any pain? No. No tenderness noted. Um, and now we're going to look at the face. The face is symmetrical. I don't see any redness or rashes or lesions. I don't see any swelling. He does have some facial hair. Um, I'm going to palpate your temporal artery. Do you have any pain? No. No tenderness noted. It's a plus two pulse. I'm going to palpate your sinuses. So your maxillary and your frontal sinus. Do you have any pain? No. No tenderness noted. Very good. Now we're going to check your cranial nerve um, 7, which is the facial nerve, and cranial nerve number 5, which is the trigeminal nerve. So cranial nerve number 7, I'm going to ask you to raise your eyebrows, okay, puff out your cheeks, okay, and smile. Cranial nerve number 7 is intact. Now we're going to check the trigeminal nerve, so I'm going to ask you to clench your jaw for me. Clench, okay, good. So that was the motor part. We're going to check the sensory part. So I'm going to ask you to um, close your eyes. You're going to tell me if you, where you feel it. The um, right ball. cheek, forehead, left cheek, beard, chin. Chin. <laughs> okay. So um, did it feel even throughout? Yes. Okay. Very good. So cranial nerve number five is also intact. Now we're going to move on to the eyes. 
the eyes are um, aligned, uh, the eyebrows are uh, symmetrical and bilateral, the eyelids are smoothly covering the eyeballs, the lacrimal system is uh, free of drainage, the conjunctiva is pink, the sclera is white, the cornea is translucent, the irises are hazel, and the uh, pupils are round, about three millimeters. Okay, so now I'm going to check for your visual acuity. This is going to check for cranial nerve number two. Uh, the optic nerve, I'm going to use the Rosenbaum chart. Do you have, uh, do you wear any corrective lenses? No. Okay, very good. So now I'm going to hand over the Rosenbaum chart uh, 14 inches away, and you're going to cover your right eye and read the last line for me. L-T-F-T-H. Okay, now the other eye, read it backwards. H-P-F-T-L. Okay, very good, and now read it with both eyes. L-T-F-T-H. Okay, so patient has... 2020 vision without corrective lenses and uh, cranial nerve number two is intact. Now we're going to move on to the direct and consensual uh, pupillary light reflex. So I'm going to shine a light to your right eye. There is a direct light reflex to the right eye. I'm going to shine it again. There is a consensual light reflex to the left eye. In both cases, the pupils constrict. Now I'm going to shine a light to your left eye. Look straight ahead. B is a direct light reflex in the left eye. Now I'm going to shine the eye, um, light to the left eye again. There's a consensual light reflex to the right eye. In both cases, the pupil constricts. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to assess for a curl up. Okay. Pupils are um, equal, round, reactive to light, and accommodating. Okay, very good. So now we're going to move on to the um, accommodation and convergence test. So you're going to stare at my pen and I'm going to move it towards the bridge of your nose. Very good. Eyes are converging. We're going to check for accommodation. So you're going to stare at my pen. You're going to look at the distant object and then my pen. Okay? Okay. Eyes are accommodating. Very good. Now we're going to test for confrontation. So I'm going to ask you to close your right eye for me. And then you're going to tell me what numbers I'm holding up. Two. Okay, now you're going to uh, cover your left eye. Look at me, tell me what number I'm holding up. One. Okay, very good. So peripheral vision is intact. Um, now we're going to test for your extraocular movements. So you're going to stare at my pen. I'm going to move it in an H pattern. This is going to test for cranial nerves three, four, and six. This is the um, ocular motor, the trochlear nerve, and the obducens nerve, okay? So you're going to look at my pen, you're going to keep your head straight and just follow it with your eyes. Okay, very good. So the EUMs are intact. Cranial nerves 3, 4, and 6 are also intact. Now I'm going to um, perform a phonoscopic examination. So I'm going to prepare my ophthalmoscope here. I'm going to turn off the light. So with uh, to examine your right eye, I'm going to look with my left eye. I'm going to move in immediately here. So there is a positive red light reflex. There is no opacities, no AV nicking. Um, the macula is uh, present and the optic disc is visualized. Now we're going to look at your left eye with my right eye. I'm going to move in immediately here. There is a positive red light reflex. No AV nicking, no opacities. The optic disc is visualized and the macula is present. Okay, very good. Okay. So now we're going to move on to your nose. Um, I'm going to check for cranial nerve number one, which is your olfactory nerve. First, I'm going to feel, do you have any pain here? No. No tenderness noted. Um, I'm going to uh, t test for your patency. See if you can take a sniff. Take a sniff. Okay, very good. Okay, so now we're going to check your sense of smell. You're going to close your eyes for me. And tell me what it is. Cinema. Okay, and now you're going to tell me what this is. Garlic. Okay, very good. So, a uh, patient has um, a patent nose. Um, he is able to 
uh, distinguish uh, senses, um, and cranial nerve number one is intact. Okay, now I'm going to look inside your nose with my speculum and tilt your nose upward here and insert it gently. So I don't see any drainage, I don't see any redness, um, there's no polyp and the septum is non deviating. Okay, now I'm going to look at your right ear. No drainage, no redness, no polyps. Uh, and the nose is appearing clean. Okay, very good. Okay, so now I'm going to uh, move on to your mouth. I'm going to inspect your lips. Your lips are pink. I don't see any lesions. Um, I'm going to ask you to open up your mouth for me. Okay, very good. So the teeth are intact. I don't see any missing teeth or bleeding gums. Um, the buccal mucosa is pink and moist. The tongue is pink and moist. Can you lift up your tongue for me? Okay, under the tongue is pink and moist, no lesions. Um, the palate is pink and moist. Um, the the, uh, the tonsils are not visualized. Um, and that's good. All right, perfect. So now I'm going to assess for cranial nerve number 12 which is the hypoglossal nerve. I'm gonna ask you to stick out your tongue and move it up and down and side to side. Okay, very good. So cranial nerve number 12 is intact. Now I'm gonna check for cranial nerve number nine and 10. That's the glossopharyngeal and the vagus nerve. So I'm going to stimulate your gag reflex over here. You can say, open your mouth. Okay, perfect. So he has a positive gag reflex. Okay, now we're going to move on to your ear. Um, I'm going to first perform the whisper test. So this is also going to check for cranial nerve number eight, which is the acoustic nerve. Um, you're going to close your left ear and I'm going to whisper something here. A, B, C. Okay, and now we're going to do it the same thing on the other ear. One, two, three. Okay, very good. So now we're going to move on to the Weber test. Um, this is going to check for any conductive or sensory neural hearing loss. So I'm going to strike the tuning fork. I'm going to place it on the top of your forehead and you're going to let me know if uh, the sound is heard on both ears. Yes. Okay, very good. So uh, the sound line arises to both ears. There's no conductive or sensory neural hearing loss. Now I'm going to check the Ryan test. So I'm going to strike the tuning fork. I'm going to place it to your mass wave process over here, um, which is behind uh, the bone behind your ear and then I'm going you have to let me know when it stops I'm going to place it in front of you and you're going to let me know when it stops stop stop okay very good stop Okay, perfect. So air conduction is greater than bone conduction to the left and the right ear, so there's no hearing loss. Now I'm going to inspect the auricles. Um, the auricles are clean. I don't see any redness or any um, drainage. Um, it's symmetrical. Uh, the left ear is uh, no redness, no drainage. It's clean. It's symmetrical. Um, I'm going to palpate your mass leg process. Do you have any pain? No. No tenderness noted. Um, now I'm going to look inside your ear. So I'm going to insert the speculum uh, inside your ear. I'm going to tilt your ear up and back. Okay, very good. So the Tympanic membrane is pearly gray. The cone of light is at five o'clock. I don't see any cerumen. There's no signs of perforation. There's no drainage. There is no redness. Um, the ear appears healthy. Now I'm going to move on to your left ear. Tilt the ear up and back. And insert the speculum. So the tympanic membrane is pearly gray. The cone of light is at seven o'clock. I don't see any perforation. 
I don't see any redness. There's no cerumen. Um, the ear appears healthy. Okay, so now I'm going to move on to your neck. Um, I'm going to inspect your neck here first. Okay, so uh, the neck is uh, symmetrical. The trachea is non-deviating. I don't uh, feel any uh, masses or lesions. Do you have any tenderness? No. No tenderness noted. Um, there's no redness, rashes, or lesions. Now I'm going to check for your lymph nodes. You're going to let me know if you had any pain, okay? Mm -hmm. The preauricular, postauricular, the occipital, tonsillar, the submandibular, the submensal, the posterior cervical chain, the superficial cervical chain, the deep cer uh, cervical chain, and the supraclavicular. Okay, did you have any pain? No. No tenderness or enlargements noted on assessment. Uh, now I'm going to palpate for your thyroid. So I'm going to ask you to take a sip of water. Okay, very good. So the thyroid is barely palpable. Now we're going to move on to your chest. Um, I'm going to inspect your chest here. The chest is symmetrical. I don't see any uh, retractions. Um, I don't see any redness or rashes or lesions. He does have a few birthmarks. Um, uh, I don't see any uh, use of accessory muscles. Um, the AP diameter is a one to two ratio. Um, now we're going to move on to your posterior chest. So I'm gonna ask you to turn around for me here. Okay, very good. So I'm going to palpate here. Do you have any pain? No. Okay, no tenderness noted. Um, the posterior chest is uh, clean. It's symmetrical. I don't see any redness, rashes, or lesions. Um, I'm going to assess for your chest expansion. Take a deep breath in and out. Okay, we have a positive chest expansion. Now I'm going to assess for your tactile formative. So you're going to say 99 repeatedly when I move my hands. 99, 99, 99, 99. Okay, vibration was felt throughout. Uh, now I'm going to percuss your lung fields. Okay, very good. So resonance was heard throughout all lung fields. Now I'm going to check, check for diaphragmatic excursion. So you're going to take a deep breath in and hold. I'm going to mark it here. Now exhale and hold. Okay, very good. So it's about four centimeters. Um, now I'm going to check your lung sounds. So Take a deep breath in and out every time I move my stethoscope. Okay, very good. So lung sounds are clear to auscultation. I don't hear any adventitious uh, breath sounds like wheezing, crackles, or ronchi. Now I'm going to perform egophony. So you're going to say the letter E every time I move my stethoscope. E, 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 E. Okay, very good. So E was... Uh, not heard as A. There's no signs of consolidation. Now I'm going to uh, do whispered pectoral equi. So you're going to whisper one, two, three every time I move my stethoscope. Okay, very good. So uh, one, two, three was faintly heard. There's no signs of consolidation. Okay, so now you're going to turn around. We're going to examine your anterior chest. Um, I'm going 
going to percuss your lung field. Okay, resonance was heard through all uh, lung field. Now I'm going to listen to your lung sounds. Take a deep breath in and out. No signs, no adventitious breath sounds like wheezing, crackles, or bronchitis. Okay, so now we're going to move on to the cardiac part of your exam. Um, I'm going to identify your four landmarks. So we have the aorta, uh, aortic, which is at the second intercostal space at the right sternal border, the pulmonic, which is at the second intercostal space at the left sternal border, the tricuspid, which is at the fourth intercostal space at the left sternal border and the mitral, which is at the fifth intercostal space at the mid-clavicular line. Okay, now I'm going to listen to your heart sounds um, with my diaphragm first. Aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral. Lean forward for me. Good. Now I'm going to listen with my bell. Aortic, pulmonic, Tricuspid and mitral lean forward for me. Very good. Okay, so patient has normal S1, S2 heart sounds. I don't hear any murmurs. There's no rubs. Um, now I'm going to ask you to lean back for me. I'm going to check your carotid and jugular uh, vein. So I don't see any uh, jugular venous distension. The carotid pulse is lightly pulsating. Um, I'm going to palpate the carotid. It's a plus two pulse. It's regular. Um, I'm going to check the other side. The carotid is light, lightly pulsating. I'm going to palpate it. It's a plus two pulse. Uh, it's regular. Now I'm going to auscultate your carotid. No furry on auscultation. Now I'm going to I'm going to lift this up a little bit. I'm going to palpate for your uh, for any heaves or thrills at your four landmarks. Okay, no heaves or thrills palpated. Um, and now I'm going to assess for your uh, point of maximal impulse. So that's at the fifth intercostal space at the mid clavicular line. I'm going to ask you to just turn on your left for me a little bit. Okay, very good. So it's fairly palpable. It's gently tapping. Um, so that's good. Now you're going to come back this way for me. I'm going to listen to your heart sounds again with the diaphragm. Aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral. And I'm going to listen to with the bell, aortic, pulmonic, tricuspid, and mitral. Okay, very good. So normal S1, S2 heart sounds. I don't hear any murmurs or any uh, rubs. Now I'm going to also check for any brewery. So I listen to your aorta, your renal arteries, and your iliac. No breweries auscultated. Okay, very good. So now I'm gonna have you sit up for me again. I'm going to check um, for any swelling anywhere. So, um, there's no edema in the upper extremities. There's no edema to the lower extremities. Um, I don't see any signs of cyanosis. I don't see any clubbing. The capillary refill is less than three seconds. I'm gonna check your uh, pulses. So we have the radial, the brachial, the um, femoral,
his Rosalis penis, and the posterior tibial, plus two poles. It's regular um, in the lower and upper extremities bilaterally. Now we're going to move on to your abdomen. So I'm going to have you lay back again for me. Okay, very good. So I'm going to have to lift up your gown here. We're going to inspect your abdomen first. Um, so the abdomen is non-distended. Um, it's flat. I don't see any scars. I don't see any masses. I don't see any aortic pulsations. Um, I don't see any redness or rashes or lesions. I'm going to listen to your bowel sounds in all four quadrants first. Right upper quadrant. Uh, left upper quadrant, left lower quadrant, right lower quadrant. So, uh, patient's bowel sounds are normal active in all four quadrants. Uh, now I'm going to um, percuss your abdomen. Timpani was heard throughout all four quadrants. Now I'm going to percuss for your liver span. Okay, that's about 10 centimeters uh, adult. Now I'm going to palpate for your spleen. That's about 7 centimeters. It was dull. Now I'm going to lightly and deeply palpate your abdomen. You're going to let me know if you have any pain. So lightly palpate all four quadrants. Do you have any pain? No pain. No tenderness noted. I'm going to deeply palpate. So now I'm going to palpate for your liver. I'm going to place my left hand underneath you here and my right hand on your liver. You're going to take a deep breath in and out. Okay, very good. So the liver is barely palpable. It's softly palpable. Um, and then I'm going to check for your spleen. So I'm going to place my right hand underneath you, your left hand, my left hand on your spleen. I'm going to take a deep breath in and out. And the spleen is barely palpable. Okay, very good. Now I'm going to palpate your inguinal nodes. Do you have any pain? No. No tenderness noted. Uh, there's no enlargement. And now I'm going to have you ask uh, to sit up. And then if you could turn a little bit this way. Okay, so we're going to check for CVA tenderness. Um, I'm going to uh, lightly tap your back and let me know if you have any pain. No pain. No tenderness noted. Um, which is a normal uh, sign. There's no signs of pyelonephritis. Okay, very good. Now you can uh, turn this way. We're going to have you stand up for me. We're going to check your gait. So I'm going to have you just walk normally to the wall as you would. Okay. Now you're going to walk only with your heels like this. Okay, now you're going to walk back with your toes. Very good. And now you're going to uh, walk heel to toe normally. Okay, and now you're going to tandem walk. You're going to do heel to toe in a straight line. Mm -hmm. Very good. So the patient has a normal and steady gait. Um, he has an upright posture and uh, normal balance and coordination. You can come back this way. So now I'm going to check your um, spine. Do you have any pain in your cervical spine? No. No tenderness noted to the cervical spine. Do you have any pain down your spine? No. Okay, so no tenderness noted uh, to the spine. I'm going to check your spinal muscles. Do you have any pain here? No. No tenderness noted to the spinal muscles. Um, and now I'm going to check for your spinal accessory nerve, which is cranial nerve number 11. I'm going to ask you to shrug against my resistance. Very good. So it's cranial nerve number 11 is intact. Okay. Now I'm going to um, check your... Um, curvature. So uh, the spine is aligned. I'm going to ask you to bend forward for me. 
Okay, so the spine is, um, there is no abnormal curvature. I don't see any kyphosis or scoliosis. Um, you can come back up for me. We're gonna test for your range of motion. So you're gonna bend backwards. I'm gonna put your hands on your um, hips and you're gonna move side to side. Okay, very good. So he has full range of motion of his spine. Um, you can take a seat here. So now I'm going to um, palpate your TMJ. Do you have any pain? No. Okay, so no tenderness. Um, there is no crepitus. Um, there is no masses palpated. Um, I'm going to check for your range of motion. So I'm going to ask you to um, open your mouth. Okay. And then um, open your mouth against my resistance. Very good. And now I'm going to ask you to put your head down to your, ch uh, your chin down to your chest, up to the sky, side to side, and then ear to ear. Okay, very good. So the patient has full range of motion of their TMJ and their neck. We're gonna move on to the shoulders. So I'm going to palpate your shoulders. Do you have any pain? No. No tenderness noted. I don't feel any crepitus, I don't feel any fluid, I don't feel any masses. So we're going to test for range of motion. I'm going to put your hands up, up, and back. Okay, very good. And now we're going to test for your internal rotator cuff. So you're going to take your right arm, you're going to put it behind your head to your left shoulder. You're going to take your left arm, put it behind your head to your right shoulder. Very good. We're going to check your external rotator cuff. So you're going to put your right arm behind your back to your left scapula and your left arm behind your back to the left right scapula. Okay, very good. So the patient has full range of motion of their shoulders. Now we're going to move on to the elbows. Do you have any pain in your elbows? No. No tenderness noted. Um, I don't feel any masses, no crepitus, no fluid. Okay, we're going to test for your range of motion of your elbows. I'm going to ask you to flex, extend, okay, very good. Okay, now we're going to check your wrists. Do you have any pain? No. No tenderness noted, no fluid, no crepitus, no masses. Um, I'm going to ask you to tilt them upwards, downwards, and side to side. Okay, very good. The patient has full range of motion of their wrists. Um, now I'm going to check your hands and fingers. So I'm going to check with my thumb all of each finger. Do you have any pain? No. Okay, any pain? No. No tenderness noted. I don't feel any nodules. I don't feel any um, crepitus or fluid. So now I'm going to check your range of motion of your hands and fingers. So I'm going to ask you to make a fist, spread them out wide. Move them up and down. Okay, very good. Okay, now I'm gonna ask you to tap each finger with your thumb. Okay, and we're gonna do the hand flap. So I'm gonna ask you to put your hands upwards on your knees, and you're gonna repeatedly flip them back and forth with your eyes closed. Okay, very good. So patient has full range of motion of their hands and fingers, and um, also uh, well-developed coordination. Okay, so now we're going to move on to your hips. I'm gonna ask you to lay back for me here. Okay, very good. So now I'm going to assess for your hips. Do you have any pain in your hips? No. Okay, very good. So no tenderness noted, no masses, um, no any, no, um, Crepitus. So I'm going to have to ask you to flex your hip to your chest. Okay, very good. You're going to flex your hip to your chest. Okay, very good. And now we're going to check it inwards and outwards. Inwards and outwards. Inwards and outwards. Very good. And now we're going to check for adduction and abduction. So this is abduction 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 very good so he has full range of motion of his hips 
Now we're going to check the knees. You're going to flex and extend. Flex and extend. Very good. And now we're going to check your ankle. Do you have any pain? No. Did you have any pain in your knees? No. No tenderness noted to the knees. No fluid or crepitus uh, palpated. No fluid or crepitus palpated to the ankles. Can you sit up for me? Can you stand up? So we're going to do inversion and eversion. Eversion, inversion, eversion. Very good. So full range of motion of the ankle. Can you sit up for me here? Now we're going to check your foot. Do you have any pain in your foot? No. How about your toes? No. Okay. No tenderness noted to the foot. I don't feel any nodules. I don't feel any um, crepitus. So I'm going to ask you to dorsiflex and plantar flex. Okay? Both uh, feet. Dorsiflex and plantar flex. Very good. So he has full range of motion of his foot. Um, he has full range of motion of his upper and lower extremities. They were uh, full range of motion in um, the right side and the left side bilaterally. The muscles, uh, I don't see any atrophy or any weak weakness in uh, one side or any deformities. The muscles appear uh, even and um, they were no redness or um, any rashes or lesions throughout the examination. Okay, very good. Now we're going to move on to your motor um, part. So we're going to check for your upper extremity drift. You're going to place your hands with your palms facing up. You're going to extend them outwards and then you're going to hold them in the air for 10 seconds. You're going to close your eyes, okay? Okay. Very good. I don't see any drifting. That's good. Um, and now we're going to check for your muscle strength. So I'm going to check your neck strength first. So you're going to turn your head against my resistance to the right side. Turn your head against my resistance to the left side. Good. So a patient has 5 out of 5 on uh, neck strength. Now we're going to check your upper extremity. Go against my resistance. Very good. 5 out of 5 uh, muscle strength in the upper extremity bilaterally. Now we're going to check your lower extremities. Keep them out straight. Go against my resistance. Very good. So five out of five muscle strength in the lower extremities bilaterally. Okay. So now we're going to move on to your sensory part. Um, I'm going to show you um, some different senses. You're going to tell me what it is and where it's located. Okay. So we're going to move on to, this is vibration. This is dull, sharp, pain, and light touch. Okay? So I'm going to ask you to close your eyes. Tell me what this is. Light touch on right arm. Light touch on left hand. Light touch on right leg. Okay, good. Sharp, mm -hmm. sharp on right arm, sharp on right leg, sharp on left leg, dull on uh, right hand, dull on uh, left hand, dull on uh, uh, left feet. Vibration on uh, right uh, arm. Vibration on left hand. Vibration on right leg. Pain on uh, right arm. Pain on left arm. Pain on left leg. Pain on right foot. Okay. Uh, yeah. Very good. Mm -hmm. Okay, so 
Uh, the patient has uh, full sensation throughout the upper and lower extremities bilaterally. Um, I'm going to ask you to close your eyes for me. And I'm going to hand you over something in your hand, and you're going to tell me what it is. Glasses. Okay, very good. Bottle of water. Okay, very good. So the patient has uh, no active gnosis. Um, he was able to sense familiar objects. Okay, so now we're going to move on to your um, coordination. So we're going to check you for your um, heel going down your shin. So you're going to take your right heel and you're going to move it down your left shin. And you're going to take your left heel and move it down your right shin. Very good. And now we're also going to test for rhombic, which is going to check for balance. You're going to stand up for me. We're going to move you to the wall. You're going to stand close to the wall, but do not lean on it. Mm -hmm. And you're going to close your eyes for 20 seconds. Uh, patient uh, was able to keep his balance. Um, there was no swaying or any drifting. Okay, I sit up here. Now I'm going to check your uh, deep tendon reflexes. So I'm going to uh, start off with your upper extremities first. I'm going to use the reflex hammer. I'm going to check your biceps. triceps okay break your radialis triceps relax radialis okay very good so the patient has a plus two deep tendon reflexes in the uh, right arm and the left arm so far um, and now we're going to check the lower extremity so I'm going to check the patellar okay and then um, now I'm going to ask you to do the Achilles so if you can come here, you're going to put your right knee up on the chair. Check your Achilles and your left hand. Achilles, very good. And then um, now I'm going to ask if you could put your foot up again for me. We're going to check the Babinski. Okay. Very good. And then the right foot. Okay, very good. So there was plus two deep tendon reflexes to the lower extremities. The Babinski was not present. Um, the toes curled. And that concludes our uh, physical examination. Do you have any questions for me? No. Okay, so uh, this was a very healthy and uh, well-appearing patient. Um, and he did very well during the uh, examination, so thank you.